so this is the the key part right um how do we what what questions can we ask to help the buyer clarify the questions that they need to ask us again without going because we can do a lot we can do some of this by asking close ended questions and, and and manipulating and pushing the buyer to to a certain point but then they feel weird they get this weird gut feeling that they know something's up and we as salespeople are maybe going well there can be frustration from our end of we're going we know the issue that you face i see it 15 times a day we have our engineers deal with it we have our our development team deal with it Uh, let me just solve it for you but how do we you know it's on us to hold back that frustration but what questions can we ask a potential customer to help them uncover the questions that they need to ask us so that they can be in control of this so i'm not a salesperson and i'm really averse to giving advice (laughs) So I can tell you what I do and then people can make it their own. So I would. So in my context, I say to people, so what are the questions that you're bringing to this conversation? What's your most important question about the thing that we're talking about or this area that we're talking about? And therefore, what are the things that we need to do in order for you to feel that you're moving that forward? But I really would say. Don't run too early. <laughs> yeah, got it. And Which is so, what you're saying. And we're going to come back to it in a second of watching other people uh, and other people's conversations because you, yeah. you, you seemed uh, adamant to talk about that. And some of this will be uh, practice and, and observing other people, I'm sure. But Claire, how do we then go from, uh, we say, because that like, could be asked in a, a pre-meeting or as we're setting up a, a booking a meeting with a potential customer you know have a think about the questions that you want to ask or if there, is there anything pertinent that you want to ask now that i can send you in the meantime we can ask questions like this but how do we then go below that surface level so the buyer has a problem of if, if i'm selling medical devices to the nhs um, endoscopic camera systems the buyer has an issue of the image on the screen when they're looking inside the patient is not very good now that is an easy problem to solve, but it's difficult for a surgeon to then go and get half a million quids worth of budget to solve it. Because when he goes to his boss, the theatre manager, the uh, CFO of the hospital, and he says, my screen's a little bit fuzzy, I want a slightly less fuzzy screen, um, it's difficult to get that funding. But what we want to get out of the surgeon is for them to realise that money comes easily when you start talking about, well, we can uh, do procedures faster and safer so there's more throughput through the operating room um it's safer so there's better patient outcomes which is a positive in its own right but also there's a a, a cash element uh, tied to that of perhaps less litigation so how do we go from getting someone to who understands the surface level problem they have and then just getting them to scratch that little bit deeper to uncover the the pain points that really drive momentum and really uh, get people to take action it all depends on trust, doesn't it? Because if that surgeon trusts you, you'll have a different conversation than if they don't trust you. So let's assume they trust you enough. One thing to think about is to ask them how they'll know that this conversation has been useful. So you're beginning, Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. So you're actually thinking about the end before you even start the beginning. So what you're doing is you're making the conversation the right size or the right shape for that individual in this context. I love this because I guess when we ask that question, we're unburdening our own uh, opinions from the conversation at that point because at the end of the conversation, uh, your classic sales question that we can ask is, hey, we've You've, we've outlined everything you wanted. We, we've ticked all these boxes. Does it make sense to move forward with this? Now, if if they've outlined what they wanted, and in the conversation we've ticked the boxes, it makes it makes common it makes sense to move forward with things as opposed to us saying, "Well, we think we should." You, our yeah. opinion as an expert in this space is that you should do this, this, and this. I guess what I'm saying is, are we overcomplicating some of this in sales, and should we just leave it to the customer and, and allow them to take some of the burden of this? So if you were talking to that surgeon and you said, how will you know by the end of this conversation that we've moved things forward? The surgeon might go, I'm totally committed to buying the jolly thing. But the bit up the bit that I need us to talk about is you to give me examples of how people have persuaded the people with the money to give the money. Sure. Perfect. Then you know what you're doing and then you don't bother 
sorry, you know, you don't need to, to yeah. go, this is a very good machine. You just simply need to, to then address the bit. We, we, when we make conversations too big, we don't address the thing that needs to be addressed and it just goes all over the place. So making the conversation the right size, you can only do that by working out what you'd like to be different by the end. And I, you know, and you know that by asking them. I've literally been in that situation you describe of the surgeon just says, especially when they've done lots of training on on, uh, on the equipment of the companies I've worked for, they're used to it. They want it. They just need to know how to uh, get the cash from a CFO, which typically requires us bringing in our CFO. And so that's perfect. I, that's, you you get, you uh, you wrap that up perfectly, uh, Claire. So with that, then is the and I know this is massively subjective, but is there a length of conversation that we should be aiming for? Do people have an attention span of three minutes, five minutes, an hour? Is there a way to, um, I'm not talking about perhaps systematizing some of this, but is there a way to remove a little bit of going off our gut? Ask them. <laughs> <laughs> What's a good length of conversation for sure. you? Because when I when we bought the house that cost a lot of money, it's the more, most money we've ever spent, that conversation took two minutes because we'd already decided and I didn't want to spend two hours yeah. talking to somebody about whatever. But I might feel I need longer. So how long do you think is useful for this conversation is a great question to ask people. Because actually what you want to do is to make it the length that works for them. And then when you've finished, you've finished. And that might be early. 